Hello and good morning for all of the folks in Saskatchewan and Western Canada and good afternoon to all of our friends and colleagues who join us from uh, the Eastern Provinces. My name is Jim Bentz and I'm the President and CEO of Hospitality Saskatchewan. I'll be your moderator for today's sessions. Uh, TIAC's Tourism Town Hall Series is an event partnership between the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, Destinations Canada, Hospitality Saskatchewan and Tourism Saskatchewan. We'd also like to thank Air Canada as the sponsors of this series. This tourism town hall will provide the opportunity to hear from TIAC and Destinations Canada to be better understand efforts being made nationally on behalf of our industry. More importantly, this session will provide an opportunity to engage on issues affecting your business and the tourism industry in Saskatchewan during this time of COVID. We'll also give you the chance to provide feedback on government policy for the recovery and rebuilding of our sector. Before we start, just a reminder that we will have uh, time at the end of the session for some Q&A. If you have questions that you haven't already sent to us uh, in advance, please submit them throughout the, uh, with, through the Q&A interface, uh, which you can access at the bottom of your screen. We'll pick them up during the course of the presentations and address them later. Also, please note that today's session will be recorded and made available on the TIAC website. Lastly, for those that may be more fluent in French, uh, we have sent the French presentations by email to you uh, to easily follow along, uh, and they'll also be available on the TIAC website. While we meet today on a virtual platform, which we've gotten very used to doing, I'd like to take this moment to acknowledge the importance of the land which each of us call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility to improving relations between nations and to improving our own understanding of local Indigenous peoples and their cultures. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which I speak today, Saskatoon, uh, is Treaty 6 territory, the traditional territory of Cree peoples and the home of the Métis. Our panelists today are, and there we are, what a slide. Oh, what a handsome bunch. Our panelists today are Beth Potter, President and CEO of Tourism Industry Association of Canada, Marsha Walden, President and CEO of Destinations Canada, Jonathan Potts, President and CEO of Tourism Saskatchewan, and myself, Jim Bentz. It's now my pleasure to welcome Beth Potter, President and CEO of Tourism Industry Association of Canada. Thank you very much, Beth. Uh, take her away. Thank you, Jim. Uh, and hello, everyone. I'm just so happy to be with you today virtually in Saskatchewan. Bonjour tout le monde et merci de vous joindre à nous aujourd'hui. You know, I joined TIAC as president and CEO just three months ago. It doesn't seem like it was just three months ago, <laughs> but I am no stranger to the industry and I have been actively involved for more than 30 years. I understand how hard these past 15 months have been on you and how concerned you are about the future. I wanna thank you for participating in today's Tourism Town Hall and for allowing me to share an update on the work that TIAC has been doing on your behalf. Before I do start though, I would like to first take a moment to acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis and First Nations people that call this land home from coast to coast to coast. We extend our respect to them for their valuable past and present contributions to this land. I would also like to pause and share our sympathy and support following the tragic and horrific discovery of the mass grave of Indigenous children. As the president and CEO of TIAC, I offer our commitment to change. It is time. The Inuit, Métis and First Nations peoples are the foundation of our country. We need to honor them, their traditions and their beliefs. As we remember the children, as we work to be more inclusive, as we go forward, TIAC is committing to learn more from our Indigenous cousins and will work to include Indigenous traditions and teachings in our work. Now, I'm sure many of you are asking, how are we getting, going to get through this pandemic and what is TIAC doing to help? And that's why I'm here, to give you an update on our current activities, initiatives, and our plans to lead Canada's tourism economy through to recovery. As you know, TIAC is the national voice of the tourism industry. We take action on behalf of Canadian tourism businesses, advocating, promoting, and supporting policies programs and activities that will benefit the tourism sector's growth and development. And while our offices 
While our office is based in Ottawa, we work closely with our provincial and territorial counterparts, including Hospitality Saskatchewan. Jim and his team keep us up to date of what is happening here on the ground in Saskatchewan so we can address the full range of issues facing the industry. In a nutshell, we exist to give you a voice at the federal level so you can keep focused on running your business. We're here to fight for you, which is exactly what we have been doing, fighting for your survival through this pandemic. The past year has looked a little different in terms of our national advocacy efforts. For the past 15 months, we have been focused on securing support for you throughout this pandemic, ensuring our industry can survive and successfully recover from COVID-19. We have been elevating the issues impacting our industry and meeting with federal officials, including MPs and senators, to share stories of industry challenges and needs. We have been pushing for sector-specific support and relief programs. We've met with over 100 individual MPs in the few months before the federal budget. Important because tourism was the first hit, the hardest hit, and will be the last to recover. From the very beginning of the pandemic, this has been our message to government. Canada cannot afford to lose its tourism industry. Our advocacy efforts continue daily and we were happy to see tourism repeatedly mentioned in the spring federal budget, which is an acknowledgement of the struggle that you have faced. It is also a step in the right direction by the government in recognizing the value and contribution of the tourism economy and the support required to ensure we can rebuild. But what does this mean to you and your business? I'm going to highlight a few important pieces from the budget. And I also want to mention that there are also a number of other measures in the budget that may not be directly tied to tourism, but do impact our sector. Things like affordable housing, broadband infrastructure, immigration policies, and funding for Parks Canada. This year's budget includes a $1 billion package for tourism support over the next three years. This includes funding through the regional development agencies, in your case, the Western Economic D Diversification Canada, for festivals and events, and towards a tourism relief fund to support investments by local tourism businesses in adapting to public health measures to help recovery. It is also, it also includes funding to Destination Canada to ensure that Canadian destinations are top of mind for Canadians in the beginning and to entice the return of the high value international traveler, ensuring we remain competitive on the global stage. The Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy and Rent Subsidy are very important programs to our sector. The proposed extension to September is a good signal towards business support but we know the sector will need support past the fall. And while we welcome this extension, we will continue our work to ensure the hardest hit businesses receive continued support at existing levels. Now, as mentioned, there are numerous other items in the, in the budget that impact our sector. However, our main priority is to ensure that you understand when and if these supports become available and how to access them. So we will be actively sending out updates and information to the industry as we've been doing. Watch for our COVID updates every Wednesday. And as we learn more through our discussions with government, we will work with Hospitality Saskatchewan to ensure you have this information as quickly as possible. Now, we're here today sharing this information with you uh, and, and we'll continue to do that going forward. And while we do that, I have to ask you to please continue sharing with us. It is crucial that we hear from you on issues you are facing, particularly pertaining to federal support programs so that we can work to address them. When we meet with federal officials, we tell your story of losing staff, losing revenue, and worrying about how you will continue to operate. We highlight what your losses and struggles mean to the community and country in economic impact and the unique needs of our industry as a whole. While we monitor program rolled out though, we also need to look ahead and TIAC is committed to being the champion of, the, of recovery for this industry. Last week, TIAC launched a new campaign to call on the federal government to plan for reopening the Canada-US border, which as you know, has been closed for 15 months. 
The campaign focuses on getting Canadian decision makers to acknowledge the urgent need and to commit to a date to open the border before the summer tourism season is lost. Following this conference, Tayak hosted a virtual press event via Zoom, joined by representatives from provincial and territorial tourism industry associations, including Jim. We saw media coverage from across the country. Tayak continues to push the government to take urgent action on this issue. So you have the ability to plan, to market, to rehire, to rebook. Our industry has been devastated over the last year and a half, and with COVID cases decreasing and vaccination rates increasing, we need to start moving towards a phased and safe reopening plan based on science. Last week, we saw a federal announcement on ending the hotel quarantine for fully vaccinated Canadians uh, in early July. We need to move faster and release an evidence-based plan so that you can prepare. Just this morning, I participated in a press conference with the Canadian Travel and Tourism Roundtable here in Ottawa, calling for an immediate comprehensive national plan to reopen our economy. I invite you to join us and to send a letter of support for this campaign by visiting tourismcounts.ca. To complete this launch, we will be hosting a number of parliamentary and congressional panels in the coming weeks to discuss border reopening. The first took place last Thursday, June 10th, with panelists MP Wayne Easter, Congressman Brian Higgins from the state of New York, political reporter Althea Raj, and myself. You can watch this panel on our Facebook page. Our next panel is tentatively scheduled for this coming Thursday, and as soon as we have more details, we'll get those out to you. Proof of vaccination has also been in the news a lot lately. Our efforts are to lead the conversation on ensuring a national approach. We are advocating for a one Canada system, as opposed to differing regional approaches, which would provide confusion to domestic and international travelers. We know that conversations are underway at the federal level on what this rollout looks like. And we certainly know that our prime minister has been speaking with some of his counterparts at the G7 on this very topic. Now, we also know that not everyone will get vaccinated, and that is why it is crucially important that we also plan for testing and processes for those that are traveling without a vaccine. It's our firm belief that travel cannot be limited to only those who have been vaccinated, and so testing and contact tracing will have to be a part of the system. We are also looking to lead the way in changing the current narrative on your behalf. We need public confidence to come back. We need them public to understand that when restrictions are lifted, tourism businesses are prepared to offer experiences following all of the health and hygiene protocols. We know just how much work and investment you have put into ensuring your businesses are compliant and ready for guests. So we've been facilitating conversations with the US and the Canadian government, um, but we have also been participating at the global level uh, through the World Travel and Tourism Council to ensure Canada is part of the seamless traveler experience for people that are moving around the world as we recover from this pandemic. We need to ensure that Canada is back on the map as a competitor on the global stage for tourism destinations. Now, I want to thank all of you who supported and engaged with us during Tourism Week in May, which was a fantastic rally for this industry. This year, we called on Canadians to take the 2021 Tourism Pledge. That is, when restrictions are lifted, to travel in Canada first. And we continue to ask Canadians to take this pledge. It was great. We saw landmarks across Canada lighting up in a glowing green to support the, the week, including the Atlas Hotel in Regina and a message of support from MPs of all parties. And finally, before I close, I would like to personally thank our members for supporting our advocacy efforts and encourage you all to get engaged and support the organizations at the local, provincial and national levels who are working so hard on your behalf. Thank you once again for joining our town hall today, and I look forward to addressing your questions in a few minutes. Back to you, Jim. All right. Thank you, Beth. Uh, and not just for the presentation or for the opportunity to have this town hall, but really for the, for the remarkable work that you and your team have done uh, federally for us. Without some of those programs and the extension of them, um, it just would it'd be, it'd be a lot different situation here in Saskatchewan. So just so you know, we're extremely appreciative of all your efforts. You're doing a remarkable job, so thank you. Um, it's now my pleasure to welcome Marsha Walton, President and CEO of Destinations Canada. Welcome, Marsha. 
Thank you so much, Jim. Hello, everyone. Bonjour à tous. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to join you today. Um, it's really great to be here, although virtually, speaking to our partners right across Saskatchewan. Um, and as it happens, uh, my next board meeting is uh, scheduled to be hosted in Saskatoon. So many of our executive team and board members will actually be visiting Saskatoon um, in person in September for a hybrid strategy session. So we're very pleased to be, um, uh, to be joining you in person then. Je suis très heureuse d'être ici aujourd'hui. Je vais donner cette présentation en anglais, mais nous avons fourni les documents en français aux gens interpréter. I'd like to acknowledge that uh, I'm joining you today from Vancouver, the traditional home of the Coast Salish people, the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and Musqueam nations. So for your background, um, in case you don't know us well, Destination Canada is a federal crown corporation and it's our mandate to sustain a vibrant and profitable Canadian tourism industry. And we do this primarily through our marketing work, through research that we share with governments and with industry, um, strategies for destination development, and by the, through the partnerships both um, with travel trade as well as um, businesses across the world. As you can probably appreciate, um, and as many of you will know well, much of how our industry operates with strength is really found in the relationships that each of us has with partners, uh, whether it's in your community or uh, across industry. And so it is with us, uh, Destination Canada, TIAC, Hospitality Saskatchewan and Tourism Saskatchewan have worked together for many years um, in the effort to bolster our industry's prospects in a very competitive global sector. Before moving on today and talking about the way forward, um, I just want to acknowledge how terribly difficult this past uh, 16 months has been for tourism and hospitality operators. And uh, I always feel that this slide pretty much says it all. Um, and even for those of us left standing, you know, recovery in our industry is expected to be a long and arduous path for, for many. So there are years of work to come and um, certainly the impacts of COVID has far exceeded anything that we have um, felt before. So today my plan is to touch on our work in three phases, uh, essentially across, across three time horizons. First of all, surviving the pandemic. We're not, we're not there yet and the related restrictions um, continue to face us and we hope that vaccination rates and everything continue to progress at the marvelous rate they are. And I know Saskatchewan's doing very well in that regard. Uh, and we need that to continue for our industry to have any hope of recovery um, beginning this summer. We need to be reviving market revenue. Um, the promise of growth and opportunity lies ahead and it's still a, a, an industry with much promise for our future, uh, but we cannot subsist on relief measures. We must restart the re revenue engine. And finally thriving, as we look forward to the longer term, we need to be taking into account what measures can actually increase the vitality of our industry over time and continue to develop and deliver net benefits to the communities that we offer um, our services in and uh, more support for the long-term resilience of the businesses in our industry. So let's start by just having a, a brief look backward um, and the initial response that we had to the pandemic to help our industry survive uh, the initial impacts of, of COVID-19, primarily through last summer and fall. Now, I think everybody knew that travel would restart first at a very hyper local level. And, and we don't typically um, get involved in the domestic market to any great extent. So 2020 was a very different uh, time for us as well. And the industry did have a ray of hope um, last summer, um, uh, looking at uh, a pretty hyper-local travel, uh, travel. And so we worked with our provincial and territorial partners to try to create a very agile co-op marketing approach to respond to that hyper-local capacity. 
And so um, by investing in our partners and in them then disseminating funds to their uh, more localized operators in cities and whatnot, we could really help to respond to the very different realities in all parts of the country. And uh, we were pleased to be able to support that. Saskatchewan's reopening plan and similar plans all around the country are certainly being rolled out quickly now. And once again, uh, showing that same sort of evolution pattern from intra-provincial to inter-provincial restrictions being lifted and eventually international borders reopening. Um, we're hopeful that that will occur by late summer. Um, over the course of last year, we also invested more than $18 million in other initiatives and partnerships to help to bring together some of the significant partners in the industry, uh, many of whom have huge reach. Uh, so to extend their buying power and the work of those partners right across the country. I think it's also just worth pausing for a moment to acknowledge that the speed and scale of government response virtually every level of government has never before been seen in times of peace in our country. And here are just a few of the programs that represent the over $15 billion that the federal government alone has invested to support tourism businesses this past year. And I know there have been many, many more investments at the provincial level and uh, accommodations at municipal levels, whether it's been changes to bylaws about how you can serve people outdoors on patios and many other changes that have helped our industry um, to try to stay in the game during a super difficult time. So looking ahead, we're seeing some pretty strong signals of future demand and many of you I'm sure are feeling that already, thankfully. Uh, our research has shown that uh, consumer sentiment around travel correlates extremely closely with the real-time health restrictions in various parts of the country. And with the current strong rollout of vaccine, we're certainly seeing a continual uptick and a solid upward trend in how people are feeling about travel. Um, so people are feeling safe to travel and we are slowly seeing that turning of the tide where host communities are beginning to feel much more comfortable about having visitors come back to see them uh, where they live. And uh, for Saskatchewan in particular, that trend has really started to pick up steam in May and uh, is continuing today. 80% of Canadians say they plan to travel when restrictions are lifted. Um, but uh, there's a cautionary tale in this that I, I have to share with all of you, and that is that Canada typically has a huge travel deficit. In fact, Canadians spend almost double on outbound travel leaving the country compared to what foreign travelers spend on inbound travel to Canada. So to help us get through this summer and, and have a good recovery, we really do need Canadians to keep their holiday dollars in Canada this year to speed up our sector's recovery. We cannot have Canadians sitting on their wallets, hoping that at some point soon international borders will open up. They need to be spending money here. And all of us are engaged in the promotion of the amazing things there are to see and do in Canada. And um, uh, we're hopeful that Canadians will very much respond to that. So a key part of our plan to revive revenue is this multi-phased approach um, that aligns our messaging with the evolution of health restrictions as they unfold across the country. And during the early stages of this, we have a few key goals. Um, first of all, just increasing Can Canadians' understanding of the importance of Canada's tourism industry. And so you may have seen um, uh, our, our new video, um, which we call the Tourism Anthem, uh, which shows our industry workers that are feeling so ready to welcome visitors back. And uh, to date, well, as of early last week, we already had 12 million views. So we're hoping that it's getting a um, good pickup. We're reigniting uh, the welcoming spirit of Canadian communities so that they feel comfortable and ready to have visitors and, uh, amongst them again, and trying to inspire that confidence and desire to travel domestically across the country. And new campaign materials are being released daily now uh, as we come out of the blocks much more quickly. So we are uh, very quickly moving into phase three of this um, uh, evolution. 
And um, increasingly, the calls to action that you see from us about booking your travel now will be more and more aggressive uh, in the coming weeks. And of course, many Canadians have already done so, and we're seeing extremely encouraging signs. In the months ahead, I think there's, uh, you know, Beth had an ask of you, and I would say I have an ask somewhat different. You know, all of us really need to take advantage of those early travelers. We have to be sure that we're amplifying any peer-to-peer -peer social sharing that they have, are putting into the uh, atmosphere, if you will, because it's those early travelers that will inspire the confidence of others that will follow on their heels to know that it is safe to travel and that the experience is as good as it has ever been uh, and that this is what Canadians should be doing with the summer of 2021. So help us there, amplify any the, the social sharing of anyone that uh, is coming into your, uh, into your sphere. So a couple of examples of uh, some recent work that we did that are um, uh, specific to Saskatchewan. Uh, in the middle of your screen, you may recognize Tara Hogue, uh, a Métis woman and curator of the Ramey Modern in Saskatoon. Now, she told us all about Saskatoon's uh, vibrant art scene, and um, she's really helping to build a healthy and sustainable ecosystem for Indigenous artists to celebrate and show their work to the world. She's very excited to welcome back visitors and have them experience some of the contemporary Indigenous art and culture, uh, which shows how the past is informing the future for her. And I know she's always also looking forward to bringing in Indigenous artists from all around the country and indeed the world to exchange knowledge and build relationships. So terrific to see some uh, wonderful examples of how people are uh, viewing their role in coming out of uh, this pandemic. So we also remain uh, very active in our key international markets. Um, we do believe uh, that the US will be the first border to open to us and that the first part of that international marketplace to return most strongly will be um, drive markets in particular. I know that's less of an opportunity for Saskatchewan as it may be for the, the East Coast and the West Coast. Uh, but we are seeing travel confidence surging in the U.S. Um, in fact, 77% of Americans say they are ready to travel now. Uh, and if watching the hockey games in the U.S. is any example, you can see that they are behaving rather differently uh, in, in America than we are here in Canada. And so um, they are truly uh, chomping at the bit and um, indeed traveling already in great numbers. And despite what many of us may see on the news or, or hear about um, vaccine hesitancy in the US in particular, um, among very uh, highly educated groups um, who also co um, correlate quite closely with higher income and propensity for international travel, vaccine hesitancy is only 8%. So it's not that huge 30% plus number that many of us are familiar with from the news. And therefore, People in our target audiences that would be more inclined to um, participate in international travel have very low vaccine hesitancy, and that's very good news for us as Canadian uh, tourism operators. Um, we continue to work very closely with our in-market teams globally um, to ensure that Canada has stayed top of mind during this uh, great pause uh, and working to cultivate those travel trade and travel media relationships that have always kept Canada uh, as a, um, a premier choice for international travelers. And one example of that work is something we did with Virtuoso, a travel trade partner um, in this high impact magazine, Boundless, uh, which was focused entirely on travel ideas in Canada. So looking a little farther down the road, um, what's it going to take for the visitor economy across Canada to truly thrive? Well, we believe it begins with a new North Star for a new world one that orients us toward why really our corporation exists in the first place. And our aspiration is for Canada's tourism industry to both enhance the quality of life of Canadians while enriching the lives of visitors. And that means having new yardsticks for how we measure how tourism contributes to that quality of life. And together with all of you, 
we will elevate Canada's competitiveness as a tourism destination, enabling Canadian culture to thrive and place-based regenerative economies to begin to emerge in a new way coming out of COVID. So to come on this journey with us, uh, please let's stay connected. You can see some of the ways to stay in touch with us on the screen right now. Je vous encourage à rester connecté avec nous sur nos canaux de communication. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much uh, for having me here today. And I'll now hand it back to Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Marcia. Great presentation. And uh, thank you too for all of the great work that you're doing and, um, and certainly partnering with us here in Saskatchewan as we, you know, as we continue to grow uh, from a visitor economy perspective and really, um, you know, start to make those strides to being a global destination. So thanks very much. Uh, really appreciate your efforts. Uh, now it's my great pleasure, great, great pleasure to introduce Jonathan Potts, President and CEO of Tourism Saskatchewan. Welcome, Jonathan. Um, I kept my intro very brief, so no singing on your behalf, right? Hi, everyone. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, my screen is freezing. Yeah, you're all good. Okay, thank you, Jim. Sorry, I wasn't sure if I was interrupting you there. I've, I've been kicked out a couple of times by our connection. Um, first of all, I just wanna say thank you everyone for being here. And I should offer a bit of a quick correction. I'm not quite the president and CEO of Tourism Saskatchewan yet, and I won't be until July 1st. So I do want to acknowledge that uh, Mary Taylor Ash and, and the fantastic job she has done over the last seven or eight years. Um, I know we will all miss her greatly, uh, but I, I hope to carry forward uh, in her tradition. Uh, I also do want to do a land acknowledgement uh, for all of Saskatchewan. So we are a land that comprises lands covered by treaties two, four, five, six, eight, and 10 as well as the traditional lands of, or which are the traditional lands of the Cree, Dakota, Dene, Lakota, Nakota, and Soto peoples, as well as the traditional homeland of the Métis. Uh, I'm just gonna speak for a couple minutes. First of all, I want to acknowledge it has been a tough year. We saw our provincial visitor expenditures drop roughly in half from about 2.4 billion to about 1.2 billion. The Conference Board of Canada projects that this year we will regain uh, expenditures to about 1.8 billion. And we're hopeful with the government's reop the provincial government's reopening plan that we might even exceed that estimate. Uh, speaking of the reopen plan, as I'm sure you all know, it is moving forward. Uh, we've passed phase one on May 30th. We're looking at uh, phase two is moving forward on June 20th. And we're all very hopeful if the vaccination rates uh, continue to move forward that by July 11th, uh, will hit phase three and be largely reopened, uh, certainly to Saskatchewan residents. Speaking of Saskatchewan residents uh, and following up on what Marcia was just saying, 82% of Saskatchewan residents have indicated in the most recent survey that they are willing to travel within the province, which is a great sign. That number has been increasing uh, very much in, um, in conjunction with uh, vaccination rates. So people are gaining confidence and we're, we're very happy to see that. Their confidence also in hosting uh, residents of the province is increasing. Uh, Tourism Saskatchewan has plans for the recovery. As many of you will know from uh, previous, uh, is kicking into gear. Last week, we launched uh, a couple components of our summer campaign. And I know that uh, Jim's team at Hospitality Saskatchewan did the same. Uh, we have partnerships with Destination Canada which across the country when the time is right. That uh, is gaining in popularity and we hope that you take a look at uh, in the future. Our goals right now are to shore up the areas that have been hardest hit. So things like air service, uh, our hotel and hospitality sector, uh, events and business travel, as well as outfitting. Those are our real priorities in terms of getting things back on track. Uh, simultaneously though, we are looking at growth for the future and developing tools, materials and strategies to get us out of the pandemic situation faster 
and to start to reach new markets or grow existing markets. Um, one thing that has been missing for the last number of years is uh, Tourism Industry Association in Saskatchewan. Tourism Saskatchewan became a Treasury Board crown in 2012. Uh, prior to that, we had served a dual role as both the Provincial Marketing Organization and the Industry Association. Since that time, though, there has been no Industry Association, uh, and we haven't been able to partner with TIAC in the way that we would like. So with Jim's team at Hospitality Saskatchewan assuming that role, we're positioned well for the future. Oh, uh, Jonathan, thank you very much. Uh, you froze up at the end there. Uh, and it was, uh, so I, 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 with the smile on your face, I'm assuming that you said, and back to you, Jim, give me a thumbs up. <laughs> You're still muted, my friend. All right. Well, well, thank you very much, Jonathan. Very much looking forward to continuing the great relationship that we have um, with uh, TIAC, Destinations Canada, and most certainly uh, Tourism Saskatchewan. We, as of January 1st, as Jonathan had mentioned, became Canada's newest tourism industry association. But we're certainly no stranger to advocacy and lobbying and having good relationships with our government, uh, both provincially and federally, as we've been in the game for 90 years. This coming up conference and trade show will be, we're referring to it as 90 plus one, um, as, the, as really as both organizations. Um, so as, as Hospitality Saskatchewan, we're now certainly, we believe, poised um, to take our place at the national table and be able to assist boots on the ground our national partners and being able to bring programs and information back to back to Saskatchewan. So very much appreciate the relationships so far that we've had with all of the entities. Um, mad props to Beth. She helped us a lot as we started to go down this path of becoming a, a tourism industry association. And there's many challenges. I don't know that we could have picked a better time to have made, made this transition. Uh, organizations like ours from an advocacy perspective um, this is exactly when we're needed most. You know, during times of peace, uh, we certainly play a valuable role, but I think it's during times of crisis in which uh, this is exactly why we exist. And uh, I think that by working together, um, it will get us all to shore or most to shore. Uh, and to use um, Christian Boyle's analogy, COVID really threw us overboard. And now everybody was swimming frantically for shore and not everybody was going to make it. And now that shore is just on the horizon and we're going to get there, we are there, is how can we best dust each other off, get the sand out and then move on. Um, our efforts for the balance of this year and well into 2022 will be firmly focused on recovery and how it is that we can uh, revive, love that, that term, and become uh, not, not just as good as we were before, but even better. Um, I'll leave it at that for now um, because as Jonathan will attest to, many that are, I've got the mic and it's tough to grab it away from me. But thanks again to everybody who's on this call. Very much appreciate it. And please ask your questions now um, as we're going to engage in part of that Q&A. And um, as I mentioned at the start of this session, this town hall was developed for you to ask questions directly to industry leaders on issues affecting your business and the tourism industry in a broader, in a, uh, from a broad perspective. Many of you submitted your qu questions in advance. Uh, and please continue to submit those questions through the q and I'll ask that the panel please keep your responses short and to the point so that we can get through as many questions as possible. And I'll do my best to direct those questions to the most appropriate person. Um, and to start the conversation, uh, let's just begin with some of the questions that were submitted in advance. And I guess the first one would be for Beth. Um, what role can DMOs play in aligning with your advocacy efforts uh, between operators, Hospitality Saskatchewan, and TIAC? Thanks, Jim. And that's a really, really good question. Um, as we have seen over uh, the past 15 months, um, the, the decision making um, around how uh, restrictions uh, for, for um, you know, health, health restrictions are being utilized are being made at various levels. 
uh, DMOs have a natural relationship with their municipality. And to continue to keep the lines of communication open with their municipally elected officials uh, and communicate back and forth with TIAC on, you know, what you're hearing and um, making sure that you're, you know, we're aligning so that um, the same message is being heard by all levels of government is incredibly important. You know, so it kind of goes like this, you know, DMO at the municipal level, and we're happy to support you with, with messaging. Um, the TIAs, so Hospitality Saskatchewan at the provincial level, and again, we're working collaboratively with our partners at, at the provincial and territorial levels, and then uh, we're working with our national association partners at the federal level, so Hotel Association of Canada um, and, and some of the other uh, national bodies. So it's it's a very layered approach, um, but it's good because we're, we, you know, if we're aligned and we're saying the same thing, then, then our industry is speaking as one voice and that's exactly what we need to be doing now and for any policy related issues going forward right great that's good here i can only imagine the the depth and breadth and variety of questions or or, or work that you're doing with all the different provinces i mean i'm sure that there's some very unique and specific needs uh from coast to coast to coast i'm sure so um uh, that's great uh, maybe next question for marcia uh, what stage is the decision, uh, what stage are we right now to open the Canada-US border after the big uh, launch of the campaign last week? And uh, is there any idea what the requirements would be for US citizens to enter Canada for, uh, for tourism related activities? Mm -hmm. um, thanks for that question. I know it's the number one uh, question on everyone's mind. Beth and I both wish we had the crystal ball on that one. And I know Beth's pushing very hard for increased clarity and certainty around this. Uh, I will say that we are slowly getting more insight into what the milestones and metrics will be for those decisions. Um, uh, we did hear a couple of weeks ago now um, from Dr. Tam that the, the first milestone is really ensuring that we get to that 70% with first dose and then 20% to second dose. Um, which we, our modeling predicts should happen in the early part of July, uh, so that much more freedom of movement within Canada is permissible. So that's a very good first milestone. The second milestones we're seeing or hearing a lot more about now is that 75% um, of all Canadian adults being vaccinated with two doses, which our modeling again indicates should happen sort of mid-September-ish. So that would be in our minds, the first opportunity government would have to seriously consider opening borders. Um, it's perhaps a little later than most uh, operators would, would wish. Um, but, uh, and, and certainly I have, to, I have to put a caveat in here this is not based on any inside information that I have as a Crown Corporation. This is uh, simply based on our research modeling of um, uh, vaccine uptake rates, rollout rates, uh, supply and distribution. And so our models show we should be at those points, at those milestones that Dr. Town has articulated um, in the timeframes I've mentioned. So that's the best information we have at the moment. Um, I know we'd all love the same kind of date clarity that we are seeing from the provinces. And uh, I know the federal government has taken note of those and how well received they have been by Canadians. So I suspect they may have their own version come out sometime soon. Right. Okay. And thank you. And certainly appreciate that. That's a bit of a loaded question that reading the tea leaves is uh, something that we're asked to do quite often. And it is so fluid. I, I believe that even uh, just recently within the last hour or two that the UK has delayed uh, their reopening plans, I think by four weeks. So, um, you know, we really got to, you know, from a national perspective, our federal government, you know, um, really, I think, understand and empathize that things can change very quickly. So uh, again, appreciate uh, the information that you're able to give us. Um, I, Jim, sorry, can I just add to that and just say that, you know, as an industry, um, you know, we do want the border open, but we also, as an industry want to make sure that the, the health of Canadians is the priority. So, you know, we've been calling for a plan so that we can have some clarity, give us those guidelines, but, you know, we understand completely if, as we get, you know, when we do get the plan, 
if down the road that plan has to be altered, that, that's reasonable because the health of Canadians is priority. Yeah, 100%. Was there anything else you'd want to follow up um, on Marsha's comments, Beth? You know, I, you know, we launched, um, you know, an open the U.S. border campaign uh, last week. And um, so I would invite everyone to join uh, our effort in writing to your elected officials. Um, you can go to openuscanborder.ca. Uh, we'll put that in the in the chat for you um, and, and join us. Um, you know, I honestly, we've had so much media coverage in the last week. Um, we're, we're ramping up for another busy week uh, this week. And we're just trying to keep the message out there that uh, it's time for a plan. And, uh, and we'll, we'll, you know, that's, that's one of our two main priorities right now. Okay, great. And if I may, um, you know, the message that we're, we've certainly heard from industry for a long time, which I think TIAC is um, very ably conveying to our political decision makers is one around clarity. You know, what are the milestones that we should all be looking for? Uh, understanding and recognizing that they can't guarantee anything and there's no certainty in those milestones. The second message is um, consistency. So when Beth was talking about we need a one Canada approach, that very much has been, um, uh, I think, recognized and, and amplified uh, across Canada, but also with consistency across the world. You know, we cannot be out of step with G7 or G20 nations um, and our key source markets. We, uh, we need that uh, consistency. And finally, urgency. Just understanding that the time is now and the summer is short. And this is when um, Canadian tourism businesses must make hay. And so, um, uh, you know, moving with urgency is, is critical. So, and Beth, Beth certainly got that message uh, out there. <laughs> I think that's certainly one that's resonated uh, from ac across Canada, and particularly with uh, provincial, uh, our elected officials. Certainly, they've been uh, responding here in Saskatchewan um, with incredible speed. Uh, we like to remind them now that we've seen that they can really move fast. They can move as fast at the speed of business. So, you know, this might become uh, the normal uh, that we would hope. So, uh, yeah, it's great comments. And a, a question for Jonathan. What are some trends and opportunities for Saskatchewan tourism operators to take a, advantage of as we move through recovery, as, as we get to shore and start to dust, dust ourselves off? Thanks, Jim, and I hope my, my audio works well this time. But uh, similar to 2020, what we are seeing already is very strong interest in outdoor activities. Uh, bookings have been uh, at record levels uh, in many parts of rural Saskatchewan, certainly parks. Um, so that's good. So any opportunity to take advantage of that, even if you're in an urban center and, and can act as a hub for outdoor activities, um, is, a, is a real opportunity right now. As I mentioned, 82% of Saskatchewan residents said last week they're ready to travel within the province. So we're getting close to normal levels. Um, the desire to see visiting friends or de desire to visit uh, friends and relatives is strong. We know uh, that Saskatchewan residents uh, have relatives, obviously, um, across borders and certainly around the province. People are very, uh, have generations that have moved uh, to different places. So use that as a starting point um, when you're planning activities for your visitors. People are looking to connect with family and friends. They're looking for other things to do as well. That applies in urban and rural. And uh, I guess lastly, um, you know, keep an eye on the reopening of the province. So as we hit uh, June 20th and hopefully July 11th, those target dates, keep an eye on what will be available to Saskatchewan residents and try to align whatever experiences you may be able to offer with those reopen dates. Um, you know, we talked about the speed of business and we talked about the desire to reopen. We know that the US border uh, is an issue that, that Marcia and Beth have talked about um, you know, very ably. Uh, we're hopeful that for our outfitters in the province, uh, and I, you know, a lot of strong bookings, um, we're hopeful that hopefully by some time in the fall, some will be able to see uh, some visitors again. 
I, I, thanks, Jonathan. And I guess as a follow up, we had a question that asked, how close are we to those June 20th goals, to those targets? Well, June 20th is a go. Um, we've already reached the vaccination targets in Saskatchewan. So um, three weeks after our first phase of reopening, which was uh, May 30th, then that triggered um, the second phase, which will be June 20th. We're 1% of the population or target population 18 and over away from being vaccinated. Um, and once we reach that threshold, we'll be able to say that phase three will be a goal, a go on July 11th. So we're getting very close and, and certainly uh, we are encouraging and we hope you are all encouraging people to get vaccinated so our businesses can fully reopen and really start to welcome guests. Great, thank you. Uh, and one for Beth, before we get, there's a, been a question that's posted, but this is one that we've been hearing a lot about. And again, with relation and with regards to liquidity and just how tough a year it's been with complete losses for the last 18 months, we wonder if there's any hope for funding opportunities uh, for the not-for-profits that might be on the horizon. Any, any insight that you can give us there? So the I don't have any specifics, but the conversations that we've been having with I said around what that tourism recovery fund looks like um, and how it's going to be rolled out absolutely includes um, funding for some of the not-for-profits in, uh, in the industry. Um, they are going to roll out the tourism fund um, through the RDAs, so Western Economic Diversification for you guys, um, but uh, it's not being, it's not part of another bucket. It's, it is a, a, a standalone tourism bucket. And so um, you should be able to, to access that and not have to deal with the complexities that we know came about um, with WED um, during the, the triple RF funding. So, um, so yes, the short answer is yes. Um, and I expect that we're going to hear an announcement of the rollout of that funding uh, towards the end of the month, beginning of July. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, some more optimism. That's great. Um, question from Brianna. Nice to read your voice again, Brianna. Uh, welcome. Would operators be able to get rapid COVID tests as a risk management tactic? Um, Jonathan, anything from anything from your folks who've been hearing about that as a request from tourism operators to be able to get it? Any rapid testing? Oh, I either he's stunned by the question or he's frozen again. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think yeah. it might be frozen. <laughs> so um, I will tell you that that uh, we are not asking government to put the onus of testing on business owners. Um, but as a business owner, if you wanted to, uh, I do know that um, the provinces have in at least I know some of the provinces have made rapid testing, uh, rapid test available. Uh, so um, you might you know, Jonathan, now that he's unfrozen, might have better information for you in Saskatchewan. Um, and, you know, Jim, I don't know if you're able to do something like work with the Chamber of Commerce, because I think the Chamber is helping to roll this out um, in other provinces as well. So I'll leave it there. Thanks, Beth. I'll, I'll just give a quick answer. Um, to your point, I don't know that we want uh, our industry to have, you know, the onus of responsibility on it to conduct the tests. However, it's a question probably best put to our business response team in government. Um, there are a large number of, of uh, testing kits available. However, how they plan to distribute them um, is outside of Tourism Saskatchewan's uh, responsibilities. So I would direct the question to the business response team in, in the Ministry of Trade and Export Development. Right, and I think that there's been some really good work that Steve McClellan from the SAS Chamber has been doing with regards to rapid testing and whatnot. So um, we can certainly give a more fulsome update on how that's being rolled out, particularly as we move much quicker into this arena. I know that there was uh, conversations um, with the festival and events group around uh, rapid testing because they'll be some of the first to, first to open up uh, to larger groups. So great question. And uh, I'll follow up with Steve McClellan at the SAS Chamber uh, to, to see where we're at on that, uh, on that question. But great question, Brianna. Thank you. Um, another question. For clarification, wasn't step three activated once 70% of ages 12 and up received their first vaccinations? 
That one has been a little confusing uh, over the last little while. Um, it is, uh, as of yesterday, uh, the government announced that we're 1% away from reaching our target. I believe the number they're using right now is 18 and over. Um, there was a 12 and over number uh, that was released as well, but, but uh, suffice to say, we're a very short distance away from getting uh, past that threshold. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, was there any more questions in the Q&A? No. All right, um, and maybe one last one for Marsha was sent in. I'd like to know more about tourism industry trends and how to manage the business, or I, I, I believe it means their business during COVID. Uh, you may have already answered that question. Uh, well, I think Jonathan did a great job of summarizing, uh, you know, what people are looking for today. Um, maybe a couple of other things. Uh, any of the passions that people typically have, like fishing, hiking, camping, golf, um, kayaking, those passions are, are really resilient. So, you know, if you're operating a fishing resort, I think you're doing well, um, uh, will do well. Um, the other thing that um, is, is great for those in the hospitality business, the breweries and wine touring, uh, stuff is is uh, people have a great appetite to pardon the pun uh, for for those kinds of activities, and I think if you are in an urban setting, um, and Jonathan touched on this, uh, showcase what there is to do that involves the great outdoors, the marvelous parks that may be near to you, the river banks, the you know those sorts of outdoor activities that may make help people understand they shouldn't be afraid of our urban environments, that there are great family activities and, and marvelous, um, you know, uh, culinary experiences to be had in, in an outdoor setting, that um, you don't have to go hiking uh, in the wilderness in order to be outdoors. Uh, and our urban centers are really suffering. And so it's, uh, that's one way into the hearts and minds of, um, of Canadians. Great, thanks, Marcia. And oh, could I just add one thing, Jim? Of course. Uh, sorry about that. Um, okay. Folks, don't forget your health and hygiene theater. Don't be hiding all those safety protocols that you um, that you do. Uh, don't hide them on the night shift. Have them front and center in front of people so they see all the work that you are doing to um, to take care of them. Yeah. Yeah, who would have ever thought that, um, you know, the, the smell of disinfectant would actually be, you know, a, a welcoming and accommodating kind of scent. So, uh, yeah, certainly our perceptions have changed uh, with the times. And um, uh, look at the time. Uh, speaking of time, uh, we've unfortunately run out of it. I'd really like to thank everybody on this call, in particular our panelists, uh, for joining the town hall today. And for, and for those that uh, uh, did so beforehand for submitting your questions. For those that did not have your questions answered live, I think we got to them all. Uh, and if, or if you have more, uh, please send them to us and we'll make sure that we get a reply to you directly by email. Once again, thank you very much to the Tourism Industry Association of Canada, Destinations Canada for partnering with us, Hospitality Saskatchewan and Tourism Saskatchewan, and for being with us today. Uh, and a big thank you to you, our participants. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you all very soon, personally. Late September at the conference and trade show, we can do it just like the old days, the way we always want to. Have a great day, everybody.